Welcome to 2019, y'all. It's your boy, Steph, back with another reaction. First reaction of the year. I hope your new year is starting off good. It's definitely time to make y'all dreams, aspirations, and goals all come true this year. New slate, new leaf. It's time to get out there and make shit happen. It's time to start all the way over. Today is the start of the rest of your life. But before we get into all that, I'm here to bring y'all a New Year's Day horror story. It is from Hoots, and it is a New Year's horror story. It was uploaded December 31st, 2017, so it made a year just yesterday. Uh, I don't know anything about Hoot, never heard of them. It's a smaller channel, but that really doesn't mean anything because I have a small channel still, but I still bring you guys good, decent, quality content every single day or at least almost every single day. The low subscriber count means nothing as long as the content is good and as long as it is entertaining. So without further ado, down in the description will be a link to Hoot's channel along with the link to this original video. Now let's hop right into it. This looks like an intro Mr. Nightmare would make. Story by Soulful Yam. This happened almost four years ago, in the early hours of New Year's Day. For reference, I was 17 at the time, and in my senior year of high school. I'm a male about 5'10", and weighed about 160 pounds at the time. I lived in the suburbs, and I was at a New Year's party being held by my friend at his house, which was a 20-minute walk away from mine. It was about 1 in the morning, and I was about to leave with another friend of mine who lived on the same block as me. My friend who was hosting the party asked if we would like a ride home, and in hindsight, we probably should have accepted his offer, but our neighborhood was pretty safe. We figured that with the two of us walking around, no one would bother us. And we're starting already with the bullshit. I don't care how safe you assume your neighborhood to be. Shit happens. Shit can happen anywhere at any time to anybody. Come on, bro. Just because your neighborhood probably doesn't have that much crime or any crime at all does not mean that no crime will ever occur. Come on, bro. Fucking up already. Plus, there were probably other people at the party who needed a ride home more than we did. We said our goodbyes to everyone and began our walk home. The road was predictably empty with no one but us walking along the sidewalk. And maybe the occasional car passing by. It was pretty well lit though, so we weren't walking in complete darkness. My friend wanted to pick up a pack of cigarettes on the way home, so we stopped off at a gas station along the way. When we got to the gas station, it was nearly empty with only a woman at the pump filling up her car and a guy posted up in front of the store on his phone. We walked out of the store and my friend immediately lit a cigarette. We reached the sidewalk and we heard someone behind us yell, Hey, wait! We looked behind us to see the guy who was in front of the store quickly walking towards us. He looked to be in his early to mid-twenties. He was probably about 5'8" and maybe 140 pounds from the looks of him. He approached us and asked if he could get a light. Nah. My friend and I didn't think too much of it, and he lit the guy's cigarette. The guy thanked him, and my friend said, you're welcome. We began walking away when the guy continued to follow us, asking See? where we were going. See? We told him we were heading home and asked him where he was going. He said his friends were at a party, and he was heading back over there as he left to get some fresh air for a bit. He asked us if we wanted to come to the party. Nah. This is officially the point where red flags started going off with this guy. They should have. Why the hell would a guy in his 20s ask two teenage boys if they wanted to go to a party with him? He's a pedophile. We told him bluntly that we didn't even know who he was. Right. Nor did we know anyone at the party he was talking about. Fuck so him. we weren't interested. 
He began laughing and said that we seemed like cool guys to party with. He told us we needed to let loose a little. My friend and I had told him we were 18 and 17 respectively to see if maybe that would get him to leave us alone. Nah. He chuckled and said that age didn't matter to him. And see? that he had a brother who was 16. Pedophile. And that he partied with him and his friends all the time. Jesus Christ, can this guy take a hit? I thought to myself. We were a little less than 10 minutes away from our house. And we didn't want this creep following us all the way there. Hell so no. I told him firmly, dude, we're not going anywhere with you. Now quit following us and piss off. He got livid and started screaming at us for being unfriendly, inconsiderate assholes, and that he was just trying to be nice. Jump his ass. He then began throwing racial slurs at my friend. It's probably worth mentioning by now that I'm white and my friend was black. Ooh. My friend yells at him to get away from him before he cracks him in the face and the guy proceeded to run away from us. Just do it. The fuck? My friend and I looked at each other in complete disgust over what happened and spent the next five minutes walking and talking about the creepy guy. We both agreed that he was probably drunk or high from a New Year's party. Next thing we know, we hear a car behind us and proceed to slow down to match our pace. We see the windows roll down, which revealed the guy we had just seen a few minutes earlier, with who we presumed to be two of his friends, one of which was a man who was probably in the same age as the guy, and a woman in the back seat who had to have been in her mid-30s. The guy tells us that we got off on the wrong foot, and asked us once again to join them at the party. My friend and I looked at each other, and I whispered to him that we needed to get away from them. Time to start running. My friend told them that we're not going with them, and to leave us alone already. The guy was silent for a few seconds and said, You're coming with us, one way or another. See? They pull over and quickly get out of the car, which caused my friend and I to immediately go into flight mode. We turned right on a side block, and my friend yelled, Run to the park, we'll lose them in there. We looked behind us, and to our horror, the three people were running right for us. We ran into the park, and we once again looked behind us, and they're getting closer. We ran into the dark, thick patch of trees that covered a good portion of the west side of the park, hoping to evade them. I was panicking at this point, because I couldn't see a damn thing, and I was worried that my friend and I would trip over something and get caught by one of these sick freaks who wanted to do who knows what with us. <laughs> We hear one of them trip and fall behind us yelling. And luckily, we see light again, and we made it to another path in the park. We heard yelling behind us, and one of the guys said that they lost us. The woman yells to split up and search around the park for us. We bolt towards the bathrooms, which thankfully were open, and we hid inside. We took a minute to catch our breaths, as our lungs were practically burning at that point. hindsight we should have called the cops and just hit until they got there no shit. at the time we were so focused on getting the hell away from these crazy people that we decided to try and make our way to the nearest exit out of the park and run to my house we waited about two minutes and then bolted out of the bathroom and toward the park exit shortly before we exited the park we heard one of the guys yell behind us that he found us and we were getting away we looked behind us to see the guy in the distance starting to chase after us. We ran until we reached my house, and I quickly opened the door. We ran inside, and I quickly locked it. We went into my living room and collapsed on the couch. We both sat there silently, trying to regain our energy and calm down after what had happened, hoping they didn't see where we ran to. I looked out the window several times over the course of 10 minutes, and thankfully, they never showed up again. We talked about it, and we were glad that we were both okay, and that nothing bad happened to us. We were trying to figure out what they wanted with us. Did they want to kill us? Rob us? Have sex with us? Yeah. God only knows. My friend hung around for another half hour before he insisted on heading home. All three. He left, and then I went to bed. I kept thinking about what had happened, and pondered on what would have happened if they had caught me. They would have clapped you cheeks. I eventually fell asleep, and I woke up and told my parents what happened. They were thankful that my friend and I were okay, but were upset with us that we chose to walk home. 
We right. should have accepted the lift from my other friend. Bullshit. Or even called them, and they would have picked us up. Regardless, we filed a police report, and I gave them all the information I could. Unfortunately, we never heard anything about it again. And I wonder sometimes what the hell they've been doing ever since. Of course you never heard that. I really that. hope they never harmed another person after that. I can't express enough how thankful I am that we managed to get out away from those freaks. And to this day, this incident is still the scariest thing that has ever happened to me in my life. This incident definitely made me more wary of my surroundings. And I try my best to avoid situations where I need to walk late at night. Whether I'm by myself or not, I don't know what would have happened had those people got their hands on me. And I do know one thing. I never want to meet those people ever again. You probably would have gotten raped, robbed, and murdered, like you said. Thank you for watching. This has a Mr. Nightmare-like feel to it. Oh, Hoots. He got the owl as his mascot. Okay. But playing around with your lives. I've heard I think I've heard this story before. Anyone who's an avid watcher of my videos, tell me, have I reacted to a story like this? I could have sworn I have. Maybe I'm tripping, but I could have sworn I've reacted to this before. I've already fucking reacted to and posted so many reactions to horror stuff like this. It's kind of like I'm losing count and shit. I can honestly say that they were bullshitting from the beginning to saying no to the person offering them the ride home as opposed to walking, ignoring the man's advances to go to the party and hang out with them, to ignoring the fact that they should have called the police and waited too long to tell their parents because those three could have been picked up and caught by the cops very quickly had they opened their fucking mouths. But they decided to wait. Teach y'all kids some fucking common sense. Oh my God. Whatever happened to teaching children not to talk to strangers, not to interact with strangers, not to do things for strangers. You flaring up his cigarette with your lighter, that started it right then and there. I can almost guarantee had y'all not made contact with him and just ran away from him as soon as he even talked to y'all, none of this would have happened at all. 18, that's legally an adult. 17, that's still a minor. That's legally an adult in some states, but in most states, that's still considered a minor. Hell, dude, even if you would have told him y'all were 14 and 15, 13 and 12, 11 and 12, the fuck, you know, that obviously that wouldn't have mattered to him. He said it himself, age is nothing but a number. He doesn't care about age. He's a pedophile. And I'm assuming the people that was in the car with him were also pedophiles. There was two men, including himself, and one woman. I'm assuming the woman would have been recording or being the lookout for the police or doing something to that effect while the two men raped both you boys, robbed both of y'all, and possibly would have killed both of y'all afterwards. That's just my assumption. But y'all were bullshitting from the beginning. I ain't walking back home late at night from a party. I don't care how close I live. Unless I'm literally like right down the block or maybe three, five blocks away from my house. Even then, I'm not walking. I'll run to my house. So if anybody tries any bullshit, I'm already in motion. <laughs> but hey, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed the first video of 2019 from your boy, Steph. This whole year, man, is going to be crazy. Y'all going to see one of the most dedicated YouTubers out, man. I'm literally hoping because I didn't reach my 1,000 subscriber uh, goal in 2018. I'm hoping by the end of 2019, I'm at 2,000. I know that's kind of a push. I know that's kind of a reach. But I think I, think I can make it happen as long as I stay dedicated, keep bringing y'all good, decent content. And keep y'all entertained and happy and satisfied. Man, I can make 2,000 subscribers by the end of this year. If not, more. But right now, I'm kind of just rooting for 2,000. But I'm still trying to get that 1,000 goal. I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. So that is it for this video, y'all. If you like my reaction, like the video, comment on the video, and share the video. And if you really like to subscribe to my channel, it helps me out a lot. 
and tap that bell icon so you will be notified every time I drop new content, which I do on a weekly basis. That is all I got for y'all this time around. Your boy Steph is out.